Here we go then, we're back in the bedroom. Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for a Chelsea news video. I'm excited about this one. I've seen a lot of comments on the George Benson Football Channel and social media in general over the last few days after Chelsea beat Aston Villa 2-1. I'm still riding the wave of that win. Some rival fans who couldn't pick up three points this weekend. It's only Aston Villa. They're in a relegation zone. It doesn't matter. Chelsea got three points. There were very good performances in that game, particularly from Christian Pulisic, who got his name on the score sheet after coming off the bench. Mason Mount and N'Golo Kante, three of the midfielders that really shone in Chelsea's victory. Today, in this Chelsea news video, I want to address some of the comments that came up in the Six Things We Learned video, and in my live stream that I did yesterday. If you've got an hour and 20 minutes of spare time, go and give the live stream a bit of a watch. Some of the comments were saying that Chelsea really don't need to go out for Kai Havertz, and with the money that we'd have to spend on him, it would leave us still short in defensive positions. And I think we can all agree that when we watch that game against Aston Villa, possession was very good from Chelsea. We're very good at retaining the ball. We're good at passing the ball around. But in terms of the way that we attack, we're still not so potent going forward, which is something we need to improve. But defensively, there were worries. If there was a better team that we were playing against, again, than it was Aston Villa, no disrespect to Villa. You know, Jack Grealish had a good game. He kept getting fouled, but in terms of their potency going forward, they weren't great either. Manchester City on Thursday, if Chelsea defend the way that they did at times in that game against Villa, we will become exposed to a much better side. So, it's very clear that the defence still needs work at Chelsea. We've got four centre-halves who are very good quality, but as I've said countless times here on the GBFC channel, I think that we need a leader. We need someone who is a level above to bring up whoever it is in the centre-back partner alongside that one player. Kai Havertz, do Chelsea really need to go for him. Well, we've just offloaded one of our central midfielders on the books at Chelsea since 2014. Mario Pasalic, we signed him for just over three million quid in 2014. He's had loan moves at Elche, AC Milan, a couple of other places, and Atalanta for the past two seasons. The Croatian is 25 years old, and he's become one of the best central midfielders in the Serie A this season. Atalanta are having a good season, particularly in the Champions League, in the quarterfinals, which will be played in Lisbon in August, hopefully Chelsea will be there when we beat Bayern Munich 4-0 in the Allianz Arena, but we won't get too carried away about that one yet. But I've heard if you do subscribe to the George Benson Football Channel, Chelsea will knock out Bayern Munich. I've just been told by my sources in me brain. Chatting a lot of crap right now. But with Mario Pasalic being sold to Atalanta for 15 million, yet again, Chelsea has seemed to be doing some fantastic business when it comes to making profit on their players. Mario Pasalic had issues with work permits. Chelsea gave him a new deal last summer. And in terms of doing that new deal, we allowed us to actually make the money this year as opposed to letting him go on a free. 15 million pounds. What have I said on the GBFC channel in the past? I said that 15 million quid could in fact be the difference between Chelsea getting Kai Havertz or not getting Kai Havertz. We've heard that Chelsea may or may not have put in an initial bid that was around 55 million pounds. Now Bayer Leverkusen supposedly are after 90 million euros. They're still in a bit of a predicament right now with whether or not they'll finish in the Champions League spots in the Bundesliga. If they do, 90 million may well be the asking price they hold out for. If it isn't, then it could be around 75 million, which is the rumoured fee that we've heard that Bayer Leverkusen are willing to accept for Havertz this summer. 15 million from Mario Pasalic. He's one of those players that because he's not been in the Chelsea first team, despite being on the Chelsea books, he's one of those players that's kind of forgotten when it comes to players that we could sell in order to make money to fund future transfers. So, a lot of people are under the impression after the good performance of Mason Mount that the signing of Havertz would stunt the development of Mason Mount. I don't want to address this too much in a comparative sense, but what I will say is that with Kai Havertz's ability, with what he's done over the past couple of seasons, at the very age that he is, potential is absolutely through the roof with this man. The ceiling of ability that Kai Havertz has and that Mason Mount has is incredibly high. So in terms of 75 million being the price tag, Chelsea are looking at a player who could potentially be sold in three or four years time for double the value that we spend on him now. So in terms of an investment, 
Chelsea are looking at Havertz as a player that would not only fit straight into the first team, but could also be a huge financial returner in future years. And it's very similar to that of Eden Hazard. We sign him for 32 million, we get all of his quality and all of his trophy winning attributes and skills and just Eden Hazard, it's just flipping Eden Hazard, he's so good. Then we sell him to Real Madrid for 100 million euros. This kind of transfer, despite being double that initial Hazard value, Kai Havertz is exactly that kind of player. And in terms of stunting the development of Mason Mount, it's very important that we always remember that we may well have affinities to certain players. We have this romantic story right now about Chelsea's academy and the breakthrough year with Frank Lampard as the manager. It's all very nice, it all looks very rosy, but at the same time, if Chelsea have got the option to spend money on a world-class player who is only gonna get better such as Kai Havertz, we can't let the affinity that we have for young players that have come through the academy forget that Chelsea Football Club winning trophies and having the best players available has always gotta be the goal of the fans, at least it is for me. But what we saw from Mason Mount in the game against Aston Villa is the undoubted quality that he has. He's a very important player in this Frank Lampard system, even though against Aston Villa he was playing in a midfield three, he was always one of the furthest up the pitch. If we look at the first half from Chelsea, yes, we went in at halftime 1-0 down, but in terms of Mason Mount's position on the pitch, he was even further forward than Olivier Giroud, trying to get in behind the centre-backs, get between the lines to create problems for Chelsea, to win us the ball back, to keep putting Aston Villa defence under pressure so that Chelsea can carry on creating opportunities. The one worry that I had with the game against Aston Villa, yes, we got three points, and I don't want to sit here being too negative, but the potency of Chelsea's attack, again, not converting as many chances as we'd like to, we create so much, but then we win games by one goal. And if we look at the XG from the game, which is the expected goals, Aston Villa actually had a higher XG than Chelsea. I know that these kind of stats are irrelevant when it comes to just like analyzing the game as a whole because Chelsea got the three points. It's the most important statistic in football, if you didn't know. But when we look at someone like Kai Havertz with his goal scoring and assisting stats this season in the Bundesliga, they're incredibly high. And I think a player of his immediate quality would still come in and allow Chelsea to convert more chances. We also have the dilemma of the other players that are doing so well, such as Christian Pulisic, who scored the goal to get Chelsea level against Aston Villa. We know that with Pulisic, he can play on the left, he can play as a number 10, so Christian Pulisic would be in direct competition with Kai Havertz. That being said, we've also got Hakim Ziyech to come in, who can play on the right, cutting in on the left, can also play in a central position, and Kai Havertz would come in and potentially jeopardize the starting place of both Mason Mount, Christian Pulisic, and Hakim Ziyech. However, I bring it back to the finances. I bring it back to Chelsea knowing that Havertz is an investment for the future in terms of not only providing quality into the first team, but also the resale value that Havertz would have with his current age would mean that Chelsea would be looking at a profit from the player's signature in the future if we look to sell him. I think the major issue that people have come up with after watching that Aston Villa game is the frustration at seeing Chelsea still being heavily linked with Havertz, being the so-called front runners in the deal, when the defence is still the biggest downfall in this Chelsea side. We could also potentially see the sale of Mario Pasalic as being an extra 15 million that could be spent on Frank Lampard's target Ben Chilwell. It was quite funny watching the Chilwell performance against Watford. He was pretty poor, I'm not gonna lie. If Leicester won 80 million quid, I'd expect a little bit more than that. It's like buying a car, but the car's not got an engine in it. It's like, why would you buy that flipping car? Buying Chilwell for 80 million based off of that one performance against Watford would be a slightly, you know, wrinkle-inducing moment in uh, the eyes of many Chelsea fans, but he did score a wonder goal, which kind of, again, just made us eat that slice of humble pie, reminding us of the abilities that he has. Chelsea can afford to spend money on Kai Havertz and also defenders. I look at the potential of signing a world-class centre-back. I've seen the name of Skriniar come out a few times recently. I think for the price that we'd have to pay for him, it's not worth going for it. I think there are definitely much more logical deals that Chelsea could be trying to spark. For example, that with Jorginho potentially being wanted by Juventus and Maurizio Sarri, Chelsea could offer Juventus Jorginho to bring Matthias De Ligt the other way. Since signing for Juve, it may not have gone the way that he wanted to Matthias De Ligt, 
but we've seen what he did at Ajax, we've seen what he does in the Dutch national team alongside Van Dijk, we know that Matthias de Ligt has got a very good future at the top level of European football. So if Chelsea are looking to, you know, make sure they've still got money available for someone like Havertz, for someone like Chilwell, going in with a swap deal with a bit of cash as well for Matthias de Ligt and Jorginho going the other way, not only would that free up, again, personnel in the middle of the park, Chelsea, if they sign Havertz, they would probably need to see more central midfielders going the other way because otherwise that is such a congested position at the club. It wouldn't make sense to have all of them on the books at the same time. That is a deal that I think Chelsea should go for, which would then leave us the money to continue to invest in Kai Havertz. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. Would you be happy to see Chelsea going all out to spend big money on Kai Havertz if we were to go for someone like De Ligt in a Jorginho swap deal. It's not something at the moment that has any concrete truth behind it, but it's just something I'm ruminating on in the mind right now in terms of that could make a lot of sense to solve Chelsea's centre-back problems. Despite being very young, Matthias De Ligt is already a natural leader and I think that him, alongside any one of our four centre-halves right now, would be a massive improvement on all of the pairings that Chelsea possibly have available right now. So to summarise everything that we've said about Havertz, do Chelsea need him? Not necessarily in the sense of if we don't sign him then we're doomed, but it would be a very nice transfer to actually get our hands on because Havertz has got so many qualities that despite the already available qualities at Chelsea, I think Havertz would still take it up a level. And in terms of the future resale value, Chelsea would be looking at a very financially viable transfer, not just for right now in terms of the value that he's being offered at, but also for the future as well. Thank you guys for watching today. If you're not yet subscribed to GBFC, what the bloody hell are you waiting for? I tell you every single time. You don't have to, but if you do, we just, we, we, we're just in a bit more of a symbiotic relationship. It's great news. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video as well. If we can hit five, thousand for this Chelsea news video. That would be phenomenal too. There's an ant on top of the mic. I need to show you guys this. Wait, if you're still here watching this, then you know, we're, we're basically pals now. Like this just show up, like there's two of them. What's he doing? What are you doing, bro? But anyway, enough of the National Geographic show here. I'll catch you guys in the next video tomorrow or maybe later. I don't know, we'll see, bye-bye.